Following months, if not years, of anticipation, Starship's inaugural orbital test flight could finally happen next week, according to a planning notice posted Tuesday by the Federal Aviation Administration. The FAA notice said the launch's primary expected date is April 10th, but listed backup dates as April 11th and the 12th. Billionaire Elon Musk's SpaceX rocket and satellite company must still get a launch license for what is expected to be its first orbital flight test from Boca Chica, Texas. The FAA has not made a license determination for the SpaceX Starship Super Heavy operation, and the FAA's command center planning notice should not be interpreted as an indicator that a determination to issue a license has been made or is forthcoming, the FAA said in a statement. Adding gas to the fire, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk also liked a tweet that simply reads April 10th with a gif of a rocket launching. SpaceX did not respond to a request for comment. SpaceX's launch license for the Starship test could be granted by the FAA on Monday, according to a person familiar with the process who asked not to be named. They cautioned that the licensing process, while nearing completion, could take longer due to an environmental compliance review. In this case, a judge would have the power to issue a temporary injunction blocking the flight test until that civil suit is resolved. Anyway, with a flight coming soon, even if it's not as early as April 10th, there's been a flurry of prep activity at Starbase, all of it seems aimed at getting Starship off the ground. As of Monday afternoon local time, Ship 24 is in the grips of the chopsticks on the Mechazilla launch gantry. Veteran Starship watchers anticipate it will soon be stacked atop Booster 7, completing the assembly of the test vehicle. Meanwhile, Booster 7, the big rocket that will do the heavy lifting as Starship's first stage, stage is already sitting on the launch pad. On Monday, April 3rd, its fuel tanks were filled in a pre-flight test. Moreover, there are caravans of liquid oxygen and liquid nitrogen trucks lined up at the Starbase Orbital Tank Farm roadside delivery stations. In short, SpaceX is very close to being ready, technically. They will make a decision soon about whether they are ready to proceed with the launch or need to step back for a few more days to review data ahead of the attempt. But barring legal action, this thing is happening this month. Starship's orbital test flight will see the fully integrated 120-meter rocket take off, while the upper stage will perform less than a full orbit around Earth before re-entering Earth's atmosphere. SpaceX is betting on its Starship rocket to be the rocket of the future, delivering government and commercial payloads to Earth orbit and beyond, with plans to reach the Moon and perhaps even Mars one day. Pending the success of the rocket's test flight, SpaceX plans to move ahead with Starship's operational launches, starting with launching its next-generation Starlink satellites to orbit. SpaceX also has a $2.89 billion contract with NASA using Starship to land humans on the moon by late 2025 as part of the space agency's Artemis III mission. Though many of us have learned not to hold our breaths when it comes to the promise of a Starship launch, it could actually be coming together this time around. I mean, things get pretty serious once the giant chopstick arms come out. Meanwhile, the aerospace industry is definitely getting busier and busier. Last weekend, the Chinese company Space Pioneer successfully launched its Tianlong-2 rocket into orbit, making space exploration history in the process. The 4.48 a.m. Beijing time launch from China's Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center, located in the Gobi Desert, Inner Mongolia, represented the first time a liquid-fueled rocket has been launched into orbit by a Chinese aerospace company, and also the first time a startup company successfully reached orbit on its first attempt. The Tianlong-2 rocket's name means Sky Dragon 2, according to a translation. Beyond making its mark on history, the rocket's builder Space Pioneer, also known as Beijing Tianbing Technology Company, aims to launch a small satellite to a polar orbit around Earth that is in a fixed position relative to the Sun. Tianlong-2 is a three-stage rocket that is capable of carrying 2,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit or 1,500 kilograms to a 500-kilometer altitude sun synchronous orbit. The Beijing Tianbing Technology Company said that the 3.35 meter wide, 32.8 meter tall rocket is fueled by coal-based kerosene. This allows the three YF-102 gas generator engines of the rocket, which had a takeoff mass of 153 tons, to deliver a thrust of 193 tons at takeoff. 
Kerosene derived from coal was recently approved by China's state-owned main space contractor, the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation. China seriously committed itself to the space race in 2014 when President Xi Jinping instructed the Air Force to speed up the integration of air and space capabilities. This sparked the birth of China's commercial space sector. This year could see over 20 private and commercial rockets launched from China. Getting into orbit is just the beginning. In the future, Tianbing technology will continue to improve its main products, such as reusable large liquid carrier rockets, heavy liquid carrier rockets, and manned space shuttles. Beijing Tianbing Technology Company wrote, Advanced aerospace propulsion technology and service solutions enabling orbital transportation and intercontinental transportation, helping China's commercial rockets enter the era of big payloads and green aerospace so that the aerospace technology can truly benefit people's livelihood and the lives of ordinary people. And for our last bit of news, the James Webb Space Telescope has clapped eyes on the most ancient galaxies ever observed. Astronomers are now confident that the light from these galaxies has been traveling to Earth for over 13.4 billion years, two new studies report. The results show that these galaxies inhabited the universe when it was less than 350 million years old and demonstrate the rapid emergence of the first generations of galaxies. It was crucial to prove that these galaxies do indeed inhabit the early universe. It's very possible for closer galaxies to masquerade as very distant galaxies. Emma Curtis Lake, a co-author of one of the new studies and an astronomer at the University of Hertfordshire in England said in a statement, Seeing the spectrum revealed as we hope, confirming these galaxies as being at the true edge of our view, some further away than Hubble could see. It is a tremendously exciting achievement for the mission. The discovery confirms JWST's ability to perform one of its most important tasks, studying the early universe via light that has been traveling for so long that the expansion of the universe has stretched its wavelength. Thus far, the $10 billion observatory has identified several extremely high redshift candidate galaxies. But these observations have to be confirmed using spectroscopy. Spectroscopy can be used to make the distinction between early galaxies and closer, more contemporary galaxies that might share similar properties, because spectroscopy can spot the characteristic fingerprints of specific elements. Early galaxies are composed of mostly hydrogen and helium, lacking heavier elements like oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon. This is because they have not yet been enriched by the heavy elements forged by stars via nuclear fusion and then dispersed when these stars die and go supernova. Co-author and near-cam science team member Brant Robertson said in the statement, For the first time, we have discovered galaxies only 350 million years after the Big Bang, and we can be absolutely confident of their fantastic distances. To find these early galaxies in such stunningly beautiful images is a special experience. The observations come from the first round of JADES observations, which were directed toward a tiny area of the sky known as the Ultra Deep Field that has been investigated for around two decades by the Hubble Space Telescope. This patch of sky contains around 100,000 galaxies, each caught at some moment in its history, potentially billions of years in the past. Thank you for watching today's episode. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.